Sounds good. Awesome. Incident response stakeholders today. Doing a lovely skills challenge. Getting hyped with some jamming music right now. Drop in the chat where you are dialing in from. I am from Somerset, New Jersey, which is Central Jersey. Let me know where y'all are calling in from. And we'll go ahead and That's go ahead. Fine, you guys. minutes and then we get started. Just get comfy, get ready. Welcome to Trisha, Constance, love it. Nigeria, Georgia. Cool. Coach Sammy is excited to give you guys feedback today on an incident response challenge. Get started in about a minute or two. Emoji, let me know how you're feeling today. I feel like it's Friday, but it's not. It's only Tuesday, so I don't know what emoji can. Let's see. Dokie, folks. Cool. I love that song, so I would honestly let the whole thing play, but it's like a six-minute long song, so I can't. Um, but welcome. We are here to do an incident response stakeholder challenge today. Um, and you, we have Coach Sammy, who if you've been to a Clicked Experience before, you have seen her, you've worked with her. Um, but why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Coach Sammy? Hi guys, I'm Sammy. Um, so I moved into cybersecurity from a healthcare background and I currently work as an analyst and an incident responder at Brinks. Awesome, cool. Um, yeah, so like we talked about, Coach Sammy um, is going to be giving you feedback today. So you're gonna see less of her working. She's gonna see more of you guys working and we'll all really learn um, from each other's feedback at the end. All right. Let me move along here. All right, so we'll talk about our agenda. First of all, gonna talk about overview of clicked, some principles that we stand by. Um, we'll go through a little bit of your scenario details today, um, what, what you guys are gonna actually have to be tasked to do. Sammy is going to spend about five-ish minutes to give you guys some tips help you figure out, okay, this is kind of how you should approach this. Maybe this is what you should do. Maybe this is what you should not do, um, which will help you complete your task at hand. Um, 
And then you guys are going to go ahead and do this challenge. You've got 25 minutes. I know that's very, very, very daunting. That's not enough time. But that's the amount of time that you have to do this challenge. And that is by design. Um, so if you feel a little bit overwhelmed or stressed or anything, it's okay. That's where the learning happens, where you're able to just practice, try doing this, um, and then be able to share your feedback and get or sh share your work and get feedback by your coach. Um, so the latter half of today's session is really the, the meat and potatoes. So that is the feedback, the reflection, the Q and a, um, really driven by your questions, driven by your work, driven by your comments, collaboration, anything like that. So please utilize that time to talk to us. Let us know how you feel about incident response, you know, challenges and, and, and what you, what you felt about the experience. Okay. All right, so what is a skills challenge? A skills challenge is where you, as learners, you get to do a task within cybersecurity um, that probably normally takes about months, maybe a year to actually conduct um, you know, certain areas of work. And you guys are gonna do that in less than half an hour. Um, so it's really, it's a challenge. It is a challenge, but that's where the learning happens. You're learning by doing and just immersing yourself completely into it, trying it, seeing what happens and, and learning from that. Um, who is this session for? This session is for beginners. So maybe you've got um, one cybersecurity course under your belt. Maybe you have none. That's okay. Um, maybe you have taken a boot camp. Maybe you haven't. That's okay. Really, this, is, this session is for anybody who is interested in cybersecurity and really just has an aptitude for trying something new and being challenged and just working through it. Anybody can really work through today's challenge, which is pretty cool to think about. Um, okay, cool. So let's talk about our uh, clicked principles, um, which are core to our learning and, and what we really do. So first of all, we learn from each other. You've heard me say this before. I learn from coaches. Coaches learn from learners. Learners learn from each other. Coaches learn from each other. There's multiple learning paths happening. Um, and I urge you guys to really embrace that. Embrace learning from each other. Embrace talking in the chat, talking with each other in Slack, um, learning from us and, and we learn from you. Trust me, every single experience I've done, I've learned something or another from a learner and who was not even a coach. And that just is really beautiful to me. It's really awesome that we're all able to learn from each other, no matter what um, roles we play or backgrounds we have, which is pretty cool. Um, second of all, safe space to try. So we don't grade anybody. We don't score anybody. There are no, um, you know, assessment, scoring, anything like that. Um, and ultimately no judgment. So try new things, volunteer, share how you're feeling, collaborate, comment on someone else who shared how they're doing, contribute in the chat, drop an emoji, literally anything will be totally okay. And this is a safe space to, to be yourself. Um, thirdly, have fun. Okay. Everybody says it, and I'm just going to really slow it down. This is an improv session. This is going to be different every time. And this is not ever going to be something serious where we're, I mean, we start the session with music for God's sake, right? You see me bobbing my head. I'm jamming out. It's a fun time. So have fun with this experience. Don't take it crazy seriously. Don't get overworked in the details and, and let that stop you from continuing, right? Have fun. Just has, don't hesitate to share any thought that comes to mind. Like, hey, Sammy and Anissa, I have no idea what the heck you're doing right now, but seems pretty cool to me. Lovely. I, I want to hear that. I welcome those thoughts. We all welcome those thoughts. Everybody benefits from them. Um, and just share any thought that comes to mind. Um, all right. So before I introduce, um, our skills, okay. Before I introduce our skills challenge scenario, um, I do want to say that 
Uh, you can utilize the Q&A functionality in here to ask a question that will populate to the front of my screen. So then I can share that onto the stage and, and we can talk about your question. Um, also utilize the chat. So if you don't see the chat, click that little message icon on the right and that'll pop out for you and you can see all of our lovely messages and just, you know, where I urge you guys to drop gifts and emojis and stuff like that. Um, and then on the... Uh, you guys, I actually don't see where it is on my screen because I'm a host, but as a participant, you'll be able to see um, a raise hand function where you're able to kind of pop your hand up and I can call you to the stage, I can invite you, um, and you can either ask your question in the chat, you can come up to the stage and ask your question verbally, you can come up and share your screen, really anything is fair game. And remember, the last 25 minutes of today's session are going to be that feedback portion. So really looking for volunteers to share your work um, and just let us know what you have. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, I'm going to walk through the scenario and then your task. Um, and all this information is in the LMS, by the way. Um, and then Sammy is going, actually, I'll walk through the scenario. Sammy is going to walk through the task and then she's going to pivot into um, just giving you guys some tips. So first of all, you guys are all cybersecurity analysts working for Uber. OK, you've received a really weird email forwarded to you from a colleague that was sent to them from some weird address, an unknown address, announcing that they had access to Uber's internal corporate network. OK, another colleague messaged you stating that their computer is acting a little bit weird um, and that this random long file is appearing on their desktop. OK, hmm, that should cause you to think a little bit. Cool. Um, so this is your goal. Your goal is to investigate this threat. See what's going on here. Um, what is this threat to Uber's security environment? And you've got to take the necessary steps to resolve it. OK, um, so you have been provided the following resources to complete this task in the LMS. Um, so I'll just show you these really quickly. First of all, this is the email that you got from your colleague. So they sent this to IT support and IT support sent it to you, security. Um, and this, the your colleague, Kelly, said, hi, IT team, see this below email I received from a weird user. Not sure who it is, but they claim they have access to our network. And I know from our security training that we need to forward you all emails that are suspicious. So let me know if I should delete it. That's what Kelly said. And then right below that, you'll see that the what email uh, Kelly received from this random person, Ayad Uber. Um, and it's it looks like it's from some you know, support specialist, whatever. Dear Kelly Adams, I haven't heard from you. Understand that you're busy. You need to reset your password within 48 hours of receiving this email. If not, your access to the network will be disabled and lost. <laughs> I have already um, accessed your network using your password, so you'll need to reset it. If you need help, please submit a help ticket to Uber or call this number. And that's the person who sent Kelly that email. Um, and then this is that Slack message that you got from your colleague, another colleague as well. And the Slack message says, hey there, before submitting an official ticket, I just wanted to tell you my computer's being weird. My mouse is moving all over the screen out of my control, hint, hint. Took me like an hour to type this message because my keyboard is getting messed up. Also, I see a file name, blah, blah, blah. It's showing up on my desktop and my downloads folder. Should I open it? What should I do? Let me know. Thanks. Um, all right. So I will pass this to Sammy to talk to you about your task for the day. And then she's going to go for it and give you some tips and tricks before you guys are able to go do it yourself. So I'll pass to you, Sammy. So I want all of you guys to basically put your thinking hats on. And if you were in this scenario and working in a role as an incident responder and, you know, basically as an employee at Google in the IT security department, how would you go about this? Um, first of all, is it an incident? Um, you know, think about that, answer that question and what it means in terms of cybersecurity. Um, and then as the prompt says, you really want to look at who does it impact? 
how many users are affected, should management get involved or not, do you need to go through the chain of command? Um, so incident response is kind of a very calculated and well drawn out process. And so it's very stepwise and you kind of need to go through it in that same pattern. Like think of one of those diagrams where it's like something happened, yes or no, you know, and then you just follow the, the arrows to lead to where you need to go. Um, so just take it from a very like stepwise kind of an approach and really just dissect what's happening here and then think about um, what actions you think need to be taken moving forward. Um, so your main goals are going to be how do you protect the environment? How do you mitigate? Um, then you want to focus on, uh, you know, further investigation and trying to gather what you can um, kind of see the extent to which this is, is it an incident? You know, again, back to that first question. Um, and, you know, kind of come up with your list of issues that are contributing to this and how you would go about it. And then what are next steps at the end of this? How would you like say this happened and then you finish all your analysis and conclusions and everything? How do you prevent this from happening again? And your next steps and what have you learned from what has already happened? So um, I think so in this task, per particularly, they want you to just compile a high level overview uh, that talks about your analysis and any remediation. Um, tips, uh, I kind of included that in going through the scenario. So I hope that kind of helps you guys without giving too much away so you can actually do the task at hand. No, that's perfect. That That's awesome, Sammy. And thank you for that, because um, that that's the point. We're not trying to tell you exactly how to do this. We're just trying to give you a little guide point how to get there. OK, um, so again, you got to take notes. That's a really important part because that's going to help you. Um, and again, all this information is in the LMS. I, I put a couple questions in here to guide you. Um, so who does it impact? What devices are impacted? What actions should we take? Second of all, decide how you need to protect the environment, right? So listen to what Sammy said. Is this an incident? Is it actually an incident? What does that mean? Hint, hint, Google is your best friend. We always say this. Um, and then lastly, given all of that, given your analysis, given your research, what are your next steps? What do you actually need to do right now in this scenario, right? Um, so Long story long, if you don't do anything else, you got to do the last line, compile a high level overview in about a paragraph that denotes your analysis and your remediation for um, Kelly Adams or Uber or whatever, you know, you decide your client maybe who the target is. Okay. Um, okay. So let's get started. You've got 25 minutes. I am going to set my timer right now. Uh, 2500 start lovely. I've start my timer, um, 25 minutes on the clock. We're going to just have some, you know, casual banter conversation. So you can totally, um, mute us and you don't have to listen to us talk, but, um, just keep that in mind that, um, just 25 minutes. So at about five, um, you know, 40 ish, I might give you 20 minutes, actually, um, 540 ish, we'll have uh, Sammy just start with the feedback portion, we'll ask you guys to raise your hands, um, share your work, let us know what you have, and then we'll go ahead and give feedback on it. All right, I'm gonna just keep the task on the screen, um, just so you guys can stick around here and take a look at that as well. Um, cool beans. Sammy, what's your favorite part about incident response? Just curious. I think the adrenaline rush. <laughs> oh, I like that. When when the call comes in and like there's a part where that's just like, oh, not again. But then there's a part that's like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, like, what do we do? <laughs> love that. I love that because, you know, it's funny because sometimes I've spoken to people and that's the exact part that they don't like. And it's funny <laughs> that you love that because 
it just goes to show like what type of person are you what you know drives you right so like um of course like initially i remember too when i was doing instant response like you're like oh my god something else like i just want to ignore this call right now um but then once you like get over that mountain and then you just answer the call you're like all right tell me what's going on let's deal with this and let's let's get to the bottom of it i love that yeah. And, you know, I'm going to become a little bit nerdy here, but I think it's part of that healthcare training too. Like, you know, when you have that response, it's, it's your, you're in fight or flight mode, right? So you're either somebody who's just like, nope, this is not for me. Uh, or you're somebody who's like, yes, let's do this. <laughs> yes. No, I love that. That is a fact. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, incidents never sleep. I was actually talking to a friend of mine and um, he made that comment. And I was like, that is so true. They never sleep because just last week and over the weekend, we we had like multiple men bridges and stuff that weren't even like a security issue. But we needed to get on to just help out with some stuff. And they take for ever so when you're like actually going through that like process to get everybody onto the call and to try and troubleshoot and figure oh, out what's yeah. going on. So it was just like, um, you know, we were talking, we were talking about it and the stuff that, you know, he was going through at work versus me. And, and we were just like, yeah, but you know, incidents never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Good way of putting it. Because even if like, you're off for the day or whatever, you're done at five, like if an incident happens at six, and you're on call sucks to suck, you got to handle it, right? And you have to deal with that. So like, I guess, Sammy, are you on call then or like how does your schedule work for like the IR portion no, of so we're on call once in every like just six to eight ish weeks um, okay cool. I mean, yeah we rotate and there's always two people on call at once so there's like a primary and a backup um okay. so it's not like and but if you're like the manager or higher level like our managers on call all the time if we're not reachable i mean they're calling on them. <laughs> yeah we feel so bad for him so we try to pick up but um yeah. but, i mean our like so i'm for fortunate that my team is just very supportive if there's like something that arises that needs to be addressed four or five people quickly jump on whether you're on call or not just to have That's some extra so awesome. hands yeah, yeah, because investigations, I mean, they take an army. So there's just multiple things to look at and go through and document. And so just to make sure that no one person is like, having to do it all on their own, we usually just kind of jump on and say, Hey, what, what can we do to help? And, you know, just kind of pitch in. So it's so good. Like that's a good company culture to have because some organizations are just not like, okay, Sammy, you're on call, you deal with it. I'm sleeping. <laughs> like I'm going yeah. to bed. And that, that like, again, you, I guess you can't really fault somebody for doing that, right? Because they're not on call and maybe they have a lot, whatever, right? But it's always nice when people do do that and they're like, yeah, I'll jump, I'll jump on too. You know, I'll talk to you about that. Um, okay, cool. I've got a hand raised. Um, so I'm going to invite you to the stage, Fola. Um, and you can ask your question or share whatever you'd like to. You are on the stage. So if you just unmute yourself, you can totally um, say whatever you want. If you have a question, you can ask it. You might just have to unmute Fola. I, if I were unable to unmute you, I would, but I don't have the, the rights to do so. Okay, so if you want to ask something, you can just drop it in the chat, Fola. I'm just going to remove you from the stage for now, but you can raise your hand again and I can invite you up once you figure out that mute issue. Um, but just raise your hand again and we can bring you up. I remember when I first like did, I literally responded to my first ever incident and I had no idea where to start. I was just like, okay, cool. That's your problem. So what do I do? <laughs> um, I had no idea. And it's just like, 
thank God, because this person's still a mentor for me now. But Sammy, like you were saying, like my lead, literally, he was like the lead analyst on the team. And he was like, okay, like he gave me this cheat sheet of his that he created. And he was just like, this is usually where I recommend starting. This is usually what I do. But I had no freaking idea. I had no clue what to do. I'm like, okay, logs, cool. What what else do I do? Um, so, uh, I will say cheat sheets exist. They are on the internet all over. You just got to find them. Um, that's all I'll say <laughs> about that. But usually there are good tips um, that exist on the internet as well. Yeah, definitely, you guys. Like a lot of the resources, I mean, they're just available and pretty much waiting to be found. And the reason I'm saying waiting to be found is like, it's easy to hand a list, but not the same list is going to work for everybody. So you kind of have to go out there and kind of find what works for you resource wise. Um, and then just build your list because, you know, it's just preference a lot of the times. So um, definitely use Google <laughs> to the best of your advantage. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool. Yeah. And Sammy, you just like nailed a point that is like super important to understand is like, it's different for everybody. And there is no right or wrong, like, because every incident is different also. So like, you're never going to see two of the same incidents, even if it's the same, you know, piece of malware, right? It's going to propagate differently. It's going to, you know, infiltrate the network differently. It's going to affect different things, right? That's like, the beauty, but also the tough part of cybersecurity, because like things are all going to be different. Um, so I guess, Sammy, like building off what you said before about like different people having different approaches, like how did you kind of figure out what your approach is? Like, how did you get there? So I, um, so there's a lot of free resources available. And so I just kind of tap into them and just try different things and then see what kind of like a tone and approach that particular say instructor or program has to teaching something. And I just, I mean, I have some preferences over others um, just on my learning styles uh, and how they break it down. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some people that are just very technical and I don't come from a technical IT background, which actually makes it hard for me to understand what they're saying. So I prefer um, the people that kind of spoon feed it to me, honestly. <laughs> and then as I keep learning about things, I'll go out and try to read more and find more resources. And I mean, a lot of learning in cyber is self-initiative, you guys. Like I hate to I hate to break it to you, but like even on the job, the best learning I do is when they throw me into something and I have to figure it out on my own because no matter how many ride alongs or, or training I do on something, it's very passive. But when I'm actually, you know, getting my hands wet and doing something, that's where the active learning is happening for me. And so um, it just depends. I mean, just depends the approach that the resource, I guess, offers. Like I prefer um, things like try hack me like, you know, lab, like let's defend like the lab based kind of um, setups to where I'm doing something like this, for example, where you guys are actually actively participating in a task and going through something step by step. So I prefer that kind of learning as opposed to just watching a YouTube video or something. So <laughs> yeah, that good point. And I think again, you're, you're hitting all these points, Sammy, because it depends on your learning style, right? So like, I learn best, like, just like Sammy said, also by doing something like you can tell me something a thousand times, it will literally not enter my brain until I do it, like until I see it until I'm like, my hands are there doing it. Um, there's pros and cons to that. It's fine. But it's just how I learn. It's usually how I teach. I like for I like to throw my students into learning things. I like to throw people into learning things. I mean, I challenge my husband all the time. My husband's like, Oh, well, you know, I have no idea how to do that. I'm like, I don't know. Why don't you check a YouTube video? Why don't you try it? You know, why don't you check it out? See how like test it out. Um, and I think like, it just goes to show like, how you are as a person, how you best learn. Um, because for example, like, 
when I told you my uh, team lead gave me that, um, you know, his own cheat sheet, I, I used his cheat sheet. It was still, it was a good guiding point for me, but I still needed to sit and watch him. And then he needs to watch me because like, you can give me a cheat sheet that has 10,000 pages. Cool, right? What does that actually mean? Like, what do you mean? Parse security logs, right? What do you mean? Like, if there is a malicious executable, like, what does that even mean? So a lot of, of a lot of cybersecurity is like taking those concepts and practicing them. Like, you don't need to go and take a course, right? It will help you 100%. Like that rigorous environment will help you, like learning with other people and, and whatever, however you learn, whatever, that's your thing. Um, but all I can say is doing cybersecurity is learning cybersecurity. Like you're never going to learn it unless you do it because you have to do it for yourself to be like, oh, so like, this is where I find security logs. It's not in Windows, you know, 86, it's program, whatever, like wherever it's located. Um, I'm kind of figuring that out. So cool, cool point, Sammy. Love it. Um, okay, you guys got about um, like seven ish minutes left. Um, so go for it. Keep it coming. I asked you guys what step you're on in the chat, but I would love if you can either, um, you know, share that with me. Um, you can message me privately. You can drop it in the chat. All good. I just kind of want to get a pulse check for where y'all are. Um, and then I will also say that um, since we got about seven minutes left, like when we have about three minutes left, I'll start asking for um, volunteers to start raising your hand, getting in the queue. Um, so we're able to share your work and Sammy can give you feedback. Cool. What would Sammy like? How, I mean, I know this is like a tough question, but per se, like, what experience did you have, like, before you started doing incident response? Or, like, were you hired to do incident response at Brinks? Or was it kind of, like, something you started doing after you started working there? Like, what? how did that look for you? Um, so it's it was part of my job description um, because we had, like, a relatively, like, it was a growing security program. And so it wasn't fully, like, the roles weren't fully defined. And our manager is, like, very open about, like, where do you see yourself? Where do you want to go? And so it is basically just kind of, um, you know, a lot of encouragement to learn and grow. And so you can be, I mean, pretty much as involved as you want or as hands off as you want. <laughs> but um, like, I, I mean, I was hired as like an analyst and um, but part of that description comes with incident response, because it's kind of like, if you were the one who responded to an alert that required incident response, then you're kind of the lead on it. So yes. um, yeah, so everybody I mean, just kind of gets to participate in that process. And then over time, I just got more, a little bit more involved with it. So I started writing like SOPs and procedural like guidelines for the SOC. And just because coming from a healthcare background, like I also used to publish a lot. So I just enjoy writing. And so um, just kind of got involved into writing things and on that side of it. So nice. Yeah, that's cool. And also like, documentation how big of a part of your job would you say that is <laughs> oh it's huge it's probably yeah. like 80 percent documentation 20 percent actual work related activity <laughs> yeah and you know a lot of people that for me especially that was like a huge wake-up call like I was like yes malware analysis I'm gonna do this 100 percent of the time and then you start working as a malware analyst and you're like I'm only analyzing malware like for an hour every day. The rest of my time is documenting it. Um, but it's not it's not horrible. And that's not to deter anybody. That's just, again, it, it's especially if you have like a writing or communication background, do not be shy with that. Like talk to your interviewers about that, right? If you're ever interviewing for a cyber role, like do not shy away from your background because even Sammy just said like, a lot of her 
approach in cyber comes from a healthcare background, like comes from that mentality. And I'm sure like someone I used to work with, Sammy, I think you know who I'm talking about, Eddie was a chef. And um, this person was a chef in his entire lifetime, went to culinary school, and all of a sudden pivoted to cybersecurity. And he said one thing that helped him you know, succeed in cybersecurity was the high pressure environment of being a chef. And that high pressure, like, how do I deal with this? What do I do? And to Sammy's point, that's it, right? That's that high and not everything in cyber is crazy high pressure. And there's like, you know, high stakes, you know, it is, but not everything so demanding pressure like incident responses. So um, if if that's not your dive, that's okay. Um, but I would just say that if you know, highly pressurized situations, maybe overly stress you out or aren't really, you know, where you feel like you can thrive. Just maybe rethink something in incident response, because if you are working with incident response cases or anything like that, um, it is going to be like a lot of pressure. You are, like Sammy said, like if you're the first person who is contacted about an incident or discovers some sort of, you know, threat or incident, you're the person on target, right? You can't be like, hey, I found this, so you want to take care of it? <laughs> no, you found it, you deal with it, you lead with that, you run with it, and then you get other people to help you, right? You get, um, uh, you know, your colleagues to assist you, your team lead, any anyone who is there to work with you, um, but super cool. I love it. I can talk about cybersecurity for hours, so... I want you guys to provide feedback, comments. Um, actually, this is a good pivot point because you got about two minutes left um, to complete your tasks. So I am going to um, start asking people to raise your hands. Um, you can raise your hand. You can post it in the Q&A section, and then I can populate it to the screen, and we can provide feedback there. You can also post it in the chat if you want to. Um, but within, you know, in about two minutes, I'll start asking folks to raise their hands um, and start sharing your work so Sammy can provide you feedback. And don't be shy, you guys. We're all just trying to learn here. So, I mean, I'm still learning, of course. So... <laughs> Yeah, ex and exactly. Like, we're all still learning. Don't be shy. Like, this is a good, great opportunity for you to just really have tested something out. You tried responding to this incident. You tried just, you know, coming up with, um, you know, remediation steps, action items, whatever, and just share what you got. And no judgment, nothing like that. Just share it. I promise you'll feel better. Um, after and your work will feel validated. You'll be like, oh, nice. So I was on the right track. Or even if you weren't on the right track, that's okay. At least you did something, right? And just share that because now you'll know, okay, I won't go down that path again. I'll do something different next time. Um, but you'll never know unless you share. Um, so please do not be shy and share what you got. Hmm. All right, folks, so I will start um, asking for volunteers now. So go ahead, raise your hand, drop your, uh, you know, work in the Q&A section. You can drop it in the chat. You can Slack it to me if that's easier, um, whatever you would like to do. But now is the time to just populate your questions, raise your hand. Um, and share your work because we're excited. So this is how this works. Honestly, you share your work, you get feedback, and everybody learns. So um, I will learn from what Sammy tells you. Other learners will learn from what Sammy gives you feedback on. Um, Sammy will learn from giving you any feedback. And it's, it's really, again, multiple directional learning. Um, so please raise your hand and we can go ahead and get this going. Don't be shy, folks. Just I know the first volunteer is always the hardest. It's like pulling teeth, like, oh, please, somebody. But then as soon as there's somebody going, then it's like they start flowing in. Awesome. Um, I am inviting Constance up. Welcome. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. It, um, I'm going to share in the chat. It's not formal. It's just bullet points and stuff. So I guess. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so what I saw in the email was that there was a lot of misspelled words. Um, there was unknown links. Um, a sense of urgency or rushed action to complete a task. And there were some random phone numbers. Um, and so to answer the question of who does it impact, it impacts Kelly, but it could also impact all users because the hackers could use Kelly as a way to enter into the network or the system. Um, as far as what devices are impacted, I said any devices because it depends on where she's viewing the email, but not just her. I only use her because she received the email. But if she was um, on her phone or on a tablet or her computer, all those are sub um, subjected to get um, hacked. Um, and as far as actions, I said the delete the email as soon as possible, uh, report it to the uh, fraud.ftc.gov, as well as reporting the phishing. Um, I would say this is a good opportunity to update software or any patches that may be in our software, and also introduce or implement protect accounts using a multi-factor authenticator. And then that's just the summary of underneath that. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. Cool. Thanks, Constance. That was awesome. Before Sammy goes, I will just say that you brought up sense of urgency and that was just like music to my ears. Um, but cool. I'll pass to Sammy for feedback. Yeah, very good job on answering the questions, um, Constance. Uh, but do keep in mind that um, so incident response is just not about determining the questions. You want to okay. just kind of think a little bit ahead as well, as in where do you take it from here? And so the the stuff where you said about reporting to, um, I think, FTC and other yes. things regarding the actual email and that kind of thing, that comes secondary to first escalating it within your organization okay. and immediately potentially um taking steps such as quarantining your network or, you know, that user's device in some way or um, something that basically can isolate what happens. And then you as an analyst could then do your investigation and then basically say, these are the X, Y, Z's that I found and then go from there. Because the reporting to the other people in terms of legal stuff um, in the outside world which is outside the organization, uh, it happens after you've already figured out what's going on within the organization. Okay, thank you. I love that, cool. Thanks for sharing, Constance. I know it's really hard to be the first one, so thank you for doing that. Um, and thanks for kind of working through this and just letting us uh, hear what you got. So appreciate it, thank you. Uh, cool beans. All right. So do we have uh, any other volunteers for the day? You can totally utilize the Q&A. You don't even have to come up on stage if you don't want to, just like what Constance did. Um, you can drop it in the chat and we can respond there. Um, you can use the Q&A function. You can send me a direct message here on AirMeet. Um whatever you'd like. Love it. And I think while we're waiting for other volunteers, Sammy, like, can you explain a little more about what you mean by like, it's less about answering questions and more about thinking ahead? Like, what do you actually mean by that? So um, it's important to obviously establish the baseline of the potential event or incident that takes place, which is these straightforward questions like, hey, I know this is a scam email because of, you know, like Constance mentioned, the misspelled words, the random links, the sender's, at, you know, address is weird, probably redirects to some random IP address that's probably been flagged, um, the sense of urgency, all that stuff. Um, those are all things that you kind of use to just establish like, hey, something's happening. But then you really need to kind of dig into what is happening? Exactly how is this impacting? Because the email isn't the only thing in this scenario, right? There was one other thing that was provided um, that shows that there's more going on than just somebody receiving a phishing email that's been reported to IT. So there's a very good chance or an indicator that 
things are being compromised and there might be lateral movement going on. There might be some privilege escalation. We don't know what roles these particular users play within the organization and whether that's going to amount to a much bigger scenario than just what was presented. So you really kind of want to think along those lines and lead your investigation within mm -hmm. like yourself as an incident responder, basically. Nothing is a wrong answer or a wrong path to follow. Um, but with that comes a caveat that you also don't want to go down multiple rabbit holes. But if there's something legitimately that you think needs to be followed and needs to be investigated, you need to think of that as an option to investigate and then go ahead and do that investigation. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Sammy, for that. And I think that was perfect that you gave that answer because now we have two other hands raised, which is great. Um, so before giving away too much more, which is awesome, Tipa, you are on stage. Welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. All right. Well, uh, ditto exactly what Sammy said. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so I received that email from uh, uh, the colleagues stating that it was a suspicious email based off of everything that Constance was saying. And then immediately, like Sammy said, we received a, a message from another coworker stating that uh, some weird stuff was happening to her computer. So uh, just trying to put two and two together, it almost looked like the... Uh, the company got hit with an email phishing um, attack and that uh, the one that whose computer was acting weird may have clicked on something that uh, uh, caused an intrusion into the network. So the next thing I'd be looking at doing is uh, identifying this as an incident and then um, alerting, um, alerting everyone on the incident response team. And then they would... Uh, so we can start the uh, process. Um, so once they would identify what, it, you know, they would start uh, doing uh, investigations and uh, interviewing the, um, um, the person whose uh, computer was uh, acting weird and finding out uh, what had happened. Did she click on something? Uh, did she download any new software or anything to that effect? And then uh, once finding out uh, what may have happened, uh, then uh, looking throughout the network to see if anyone else was compromised and if they ran into that issue and then uh, start containment and uh, possibly uh, resetting passwords for those affected users, uh, isolating their, um, their devices in the network not necessarily shutting them down, but isolating them. Um, and then uh, taking a look to find out exactly what may have happened. Uh, uh, so if it was like malware that actually caused the computer to start acting weird like that, uh, start doing forensics on that. Um, and then, um, Uh, that's basically as far as I got. I love that. No, thanks, Tipa. That's great. And I, you mentioned really great points, like isolating things. Um, so I'll pass it to Sammy. That was great. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, that's about three-fourths of the process right there that you basically explained. Um, and in the perfect order. So uh, generally... So a lot of companies, at least in the U.S., like to follow the NIST framework, NIST, for incident response. Um, so it basically kind of lays that out. And it's sequential, but then it's also like a circle. And you can come back and repeat parts of the process if you need to with just various aspects. Just say in case you find like, oh, there's something else. Then you will be going back to a certain part in the process. Um, but to... To, to kind of, well, actually, if there's somebody else, I'll let them go first before. <laughs> yeah, no, this is good. Thanks, Tipa. Um, oh, actually, there was someone else, but I think 
um, they removed their hand. So if you want to, you can you totally, we're taking other volunteers. So if you want to raise your hand again or anybody, um, the floor is yours to raise your hand again. Um, you can totally do that or drop whatever you would like to in the chat and we can take a look at it there. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and finish your thoughts, Sammy, because we will wrap up after this anyway. So, um, after forensics and after gathering all the evidence and kind of going back, you want to finish out your process, um, by doing like lessons learned and writing out pretty much everything that happened. And, um, you know, going back to our discussion on documentation, Yes, documentation can be very tedious, but it is your friend because everything you put there down on paper, I mean, that basically highlights what it is you did, why you did it. I mean, because a lot of cyber is also looking into a lot of privileged information. And so you want to make sure that you're documenting and you have just cause to be, to be basically doing that. Um, and so documentation becomes your friend because you can always go back to it and say, here's why I did what I did. And that also like protects you from a legal standpoint and from a company standpoint. And so that's why it becomes very, very important to document. Um, but you want to basically do like a lessons learned, document everything. And then usually um, there's like a concluding, you know, meeting where you're teaching other people what it is that you learned. And then you come up with a plan to implement um, potentially now your organization may or may not follow that plan because it depends on so many factors like financial resources, you know, what they have budgeted and so on and so forth and what higher level management and C-suite wants to do. But your job ends essentially after you do like a looking forward and what can we implement to prevent this from happening again. Um, so that that's like the entirety of the process. Yeah. No, I love that. And that was, that was great guys. Honestly, first of all, thank you, Sammy, for that like awesome deep dive. And thank you to all of our volunteers, um, especially Constance and Tipa for really just walking through and like letting us know what your process was. Um, because like Sammy said, no wrong answers, right? It's really just um, maybe some other guidance areas where you should just make sure you hit as you're going through whatever you were talking about. Um, but guys, this was really great. And I think everybody learned from this, which is awesome. Um, and like, like Sammy said, really just like, you know, wrapping together, I guess, Sammy, if you had like one parting, you know, piece of advice for incident response or incident responding, what would it be? So, so for me, and this might sound a little like, I don't know, tacky, I guess, but it's, it would be to follow your spidey sense because a lot of the time that's kind of what it is, right? Because you're, you have these investigative hats on and not everything is very like black or white and it's a lot of gray and a lot of following your gut feeling. And so that's kind of like my motto, just, you know, be a little spider man or woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And not like, follow your gut and also trust your gut, like trust those spidey senses, right? Because if your gut's telling you that you should probably look at this or ask this question, you probably should. That That's a good indicator that you probably should find out um, more about that, which, you know, great, great advice by Sammy. I love that. Um, all right, cool, folks. Well, that wraps up our session for the day. Um, thank you, as always, to Coach Sammy for um, providing really awesome feedback. And more importantly, thank you to you guys um, for sharing your work with us so we are able to provide you that feedback and work through this and learn from each other, learn with each other. Um, I think this was really great, guys. I had a lot of fun today. Hope you guys did. I hope you learned something. Um, I dropped the feedback form in the chat. So if you can please fill that out, let us know how you felt about today's session. Let us know um, if you have any thoughts, anything like that. Um, really just share how you're feeling so we can be better for our next sessions. But um, other than that, I will look forward to seeing you at the rest of our experiences this week. And we've got about two or three happening next week. Um, and super excited to see you guys at the next one. Have a good night. See you all next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>